Bonsoir, my friends, and welcome to a special edition of Eurotrash. My name is Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is Antoine de Cohn. And yes, it's true, we know nothing about movies. But Channel 4 has sent us here to cover the Cannes Film Festival. But don't worry, my low-brow British tombs. We know you're not interested in art, culture, or anything with subtitles. We know you don't care what Wim Wenders is wearing, what Gérard Depardieu is drinking, or what Emma Bloody Thompson is thinking. That's why this special edition of Eurotrash at Cannes will bring you the same brand of sleazy stories and shoddy journalism that you've come to know and love. Best of all, because we are out here in the sun, it gives you a chance to take a long look at our delicious legs. Come closer, Mr. Camera. Show them our legs, how nice and firm and beautiful they are. So there will be plenty of leggy lovelies, hopefully some less hairy ones, and much, much more tonight as Eurotrash gives a big bonjour to the Cannes Film Festival. So what other films does Eurotrash recommend? Certainly nothing from the mainstream competition. We're much too smug and superior for that. Here instead are some alternative efforts. Darcy! Hey! Come on, come swimming. So that's your new girl, huh? I hope so for now. You like him kind of young, right? Fucking babe. <laughs> I like him new, not like you. Fuck you! <laughs> Kids, with its graphic and frank portrayal of underage sex, was the most controversial offering at Cannes. Yo, tell me says what's up. I knew you want to speak to me, that dick. You still mad at him? Oh. Of course I am. How am I going to forgive him after what he did? Well, what did he do? He stole her virginity. Oh. He took it away, <laughs> and now it's gone. Forever. Oh. Oh. So, just be glad you didn't lose your virginity in the backseat of a rental car. Oh. Oh. That shit is nothing. I remember I had just turned 14 with this fucking asshole who was like 18 years old. I can't remember his fucking name anymore. This is where I like sleep away camp with your friends and shit. And um, we were getting it on in the bush it was like around midnight. I got fucking mosquito bites all over my ass. <laughs> Stonewall is the final work of acclaimed British director Nigel Finch, who sadly died this year. It's about being gay at the end of the 60s and achieves the rare combination of humour and history in a movie that also has a message. Hey, bros. Bros and sisters with soul. I'm ready for action. Where do I sign? <laughs> Ladies to the left. Oh, I ain't no lady, Mr. Sir. I'm sorry. See, that's why I walked the middle of the room. Story of my damn life. The film tells the true story of the 1968 Stonewall riots in New York, sparked off by police harassment of the gay community. I hope everyone is wearing the legal minimum requirement of three items of clothing appropriate their gender as prescribed by nature. You! I'm sorry, sister. That pathetic little blouse don't say man to me. All right, get them all out of here. Baggage, don't know whether to kill me or kiss me. Guess I made up my mind. My name is Björk, and I'm in a Welsh forest. Dolgethly, to be precise, where Eurotrash stumbled into a leafy glade and found the Icelandic pixie putting the finishing touches to her latest video for her new single entitled Isabel. But what exactly is going on? Bjork explained to Eurotrash what the video was all about. Basically, the story of Isabel is she was born in a forest by a spark. And, and as she grew up, she realised that the, the pebbles on the forest floor were actually skyscrapers. And by the time she was a grown-up woman and the skyscrapers had taken over the forest, she found herself in a city and she didn't like um, all the people there so much because they were a bit too clever for her. She decided to send um, to the world all these moths that she had trained to go and fly all over the world and go inside windows of people's houses, the ones that are too clever, and they sit on their shoulder 
and and uh, remind them to stop being clever and start to function by their instinct. And by how they do that by saying na 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 to them, and then they say, oh, sorry, I was being all clever there, and they start functioning on instinct. Uh, thank you, Bjork. No, it's not the story. It's okay. shit. Oh. This tetchy little Frenchman, Michel Gondry, yes. is the director on a mission to turn Bjork's double Dutch into celluloid. But it's okay, he speaks her language, even to the extent of fulfilling her unusual meat-related requests. Okay, she speaks about her heart. It's, it's funny to, to show a real heart, which is just a piece of meat. Michelle has been feeding Bjork's hunger for startling images for a while now, as well as churning out videos for such rock luminaries as the Black Crows and Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> His ability to create strange worlds populated with weird inhabitants has earned Michelle a bit of a reputation as a mad scientist. And Bjork loves it. I guess I've got a soft spot for scientists. When I was in school, I used to fall for the boys in the thick glasses who sat in the back of the class in an insect collection around their house. And um, I guess in a certain way, Michelle fits under that. In fact, Michelle, the mad scientist, plans to do a full-length movie about the love life of insects. And guess who's doing the soundtrack? I, I said, Michelle, insects and love. I could deal with that chemistry. Some of you out there might be wondering why Jean-Paul and I are straddling these plastic horses. Well, it's not just because their rhythmic movement provides a pleasant sensation. No, no, my friends, the answer goes much deeper than that, if you catch my drift. In fact, Antoine and I are trying to look like innocent little children because our next story is about a film called La Cité des Enfants Perdus, The City of the Lost Children. The film was made by the same French directing team that brought you Delicatessen and it's our very own Jean-Paul Gaultier who designed the incredible, the fabulous costumes. Thank you. Dear. Yes. Okay, so roll the tape and come on Jean-Paul, let's get the hell of this stupid machine. No, but I have not finished my ice cream. Oh yeah? Can I test your ice cream? Of course, Antoine. Thank you very much. Come on. Thank you, Antoine. The film that opened the Cannes Festival was The City of Lost Children, directed by French directors Genet and Caro, the makers of Delicatessen. The costumes were designed by Eurotrash's Jean-Paul Gaultier, and the movie made history before it was even screened as the most expensive French film ever made. It's the story of an evil old man who kidnaps children so that he can steal their dreams. Some critics say it's too twisted for toddlers, but Genet and Caro, a demented duo, feel this is just what the kids need. This film could also be enjoyed by children. We showed it to a seven-year-old child once and she seemed to have survived. Silence! Legume! If you run the film backwards, I think there are some satanic messages in it. It's a laugh, isn't it? OK, so if I see the film three times, will I understand the message? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> hmm.